What's up guys, Damon here with Charm Defense and today I'm going to be showing you in detail how to properly stage your tourniquets, how to apply a tourniquet to somebody else, or if needed, how to apply it to yourself in a really bad situation. Let's get into it. So what we are gonna be talking about today is a CAT7 tourniquet from National American Rescue. Now what I have here is a blue training tourniquet. We don't want these in real life situations. These are just for training because they're very easy to break if enough pressure is applied. So we wanna make sure we have an actual tourniquet with us and not one of these blue ones. You don't wanna to have to use it and it be a knockoff or a training tourniquet like this and it not work like it's supposed to. So as you can tell, I've already got it pulled apart. The first thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about how to properly stage your tourniquet for deployment. And the method I use, there's two different ways that you have to store it. It has to either be in a tourniquet holder of some sort, or you have to have some kind of band around it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure it's all the way apart. And we have this red tab on this side that goes through this little buckle right here. So we're just gonna slide that through that. We're gonna pull it about six inches, maybe a little further through that buckle. And then we're just gonna fold it down on top of itself with that Velcro to where it sticks as such. So now you have a ring just like this. We're gonna take that little dot, uh, that little tab right there and I like to pull it off and then fold it down on itself as such. That gives me something to grab onto in case I actually have to use it. Because when you think about it, if your stress levels are through the roof or you're, you're in this bad situation, you're probably not thinking straight. And a lot of times your fine motor skills tend to decline to the point where it's harder to do simple, uh, minute tasks such as grabbing something like this if it's velcroed on itself. So I like to take that little tab and flip it over just like that so I have something to easily grip onto in a quick situation. From there, we're going to go ahead and take this time tab that's on the, uh, the windless lock. And instead of having it like this, like it comes packaged, we're just gonna pull that apart just like this and we're gonna fold it onto itself on this side right here where it looks just like that. And we have something left over so we have a lip also, same concept as this, to grab onto in case we have to grab it quickly because again, our fine motor skills will tend to decline in these bad situations. So once we have it here, like I said, there are a couple different ways that we can stage this and get it ready for quick and easy deployments. Both of these methods are great methods and you can use whichever one you practice with the most or whatever one you're most comfortable with. So the way most people are taught is they're, they're taught to Velcro it to itself so it doesn't open by itself, right? So what we're gonna do for this original method of storing this tourniquet for deployment is we're going to just fold it as such to where the windlass is on the bottom, our buckle is here and our pull tab is on the top. We're gonna to grab right above that buckle. We're gonna hold this to where the Velcro is on this side and there's Velcro on this side, just like this. And we're just gonna fold it down onto itself and squeeze it together. So as you can tell, it's Velcro together. So now it's not gonna easily fall apart or open. Um, this is the method that most people are taught because again, it stays together and it's easy to, to, to pack away and keep with you. This is a good method to use. It's just not my preferred method. The reason being is because now you have to fidget with the Velcro if you have to deploy it quickly. And again, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can either grab the windlass right here as such, and we can just pop it open and pull it open to where it's ready to go onto a limb, right? The other way is we can just fold it back onto itself. And if we have to use it, we can just simply pull it open like that. But again, that takes two hands. It takes a little more time just having to mess with that Velcro. The other method I'm gonna show you is a little bit quicker. It only takes one hand and you don't have to mess with the Velcro, but you have to be able to store it in some fashion. And honestly, this is my preferred method because I practice with it more and I'm more used to it. Instead of holding it like this and grabbing above the buckle, to where we can put it down on itself on the Velcro. We're just gonna have the buckle up top and the windlass on bottom. And we're just gonna grab at the buckle and let it come down. So now we have non-Velcro on top and Velcro down here. And then we're just gonna fold this onto the non-Velcro side. So if we were to let go of it, it just pops open and able to be put on somebody's uh, limb. Now, again, this is my method. I don't have to mess with the Velcro. I can just open it and it's ready to go. And two, it's just a little bit quicker. Now, like I said, you have to have a way to store this because as you saw, I was able just to pop it open and it, it opens up by itself, right? So we need a way to store it. So the best way to store these is to have some kind of tourniquet holder. The way I do it, because I carry these in my car, not these trading ones, but I carry actual tourniquets set up like this, 
in my vehicle um, in case I need them, my wife needs them, my kids need them, whatever it may be. The other way you can do it is you can take some sort of rubber band, some sort of small rubber band just like this, and we can just wrap it around the tourniquet as such. So now it's not going to fall open. And if I did have to use this, all I'd have to do is instead of messing with the Velcro, just grab that rubber band and pop it off and then it just falls open. Just know what you wanna do, practice with it and get used to it. That way, if you need it, you don't have to fidget or think about what you need to do. Now next, because I am by myself and I don't have a partner today, I am gonna be using my handy dandy uh, yoga block, also known as a great uh, first aid trainer. As you can see, there's already a hole in it because I use it for wound packing and stopping the bleeding. But I'm gonna use this to show you how to properly apply a Cat7 tourniquet around somebody's limb. If you do believe that you need a tourniquet on somebody's limb or your own limb, it's because you believe there's a lot of blood loss or a lot of hammers happening to that person or yourself. So the best thing you can do is always just remember high and tight, high and tight, high and tight on each of the four limbs because those are the only places we can apply tourniquets. And the reason I say high and tight is because you don't want to have to think about where to put the tourniquet. A lot of people say, well, two inches above the joint, two inches below the joint, etc." Don't even think about that. If you see a lot of blood loss or a lot of hemorrhage, just put the tourniquet high and tight on the limb and stop that blood loss from happening. Control that hemorrhage. I'm gonna show you two different methods that we can put it on. The first one is going to be if it's on their leg and you may not be able to lift their leg up, you may have to slide this tourniquet under their leg and wrap it around there. So all we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this apart as such, and we're just gonna slide it underneath their leg. Now, obviously it doesn't move the same way a leg would, but uh, this is just for showing you. So once we have it under the leg, we're just gonna go ahead and put that back through. And now we can start tightening that tourniquet, however tight we may need it. It is a little more difficult with the yoga block because again, it's not a limb and it's, it's light and it's easy to move around but I'm just gonna show you real quickly. We're gonna tighten that as much as we can to go ahead and apply as much pressure as we can with just tighten the tourniquet down. From there, we're gonna take the windlass, which is the little uh, piece that we spin to tighten the tourniquet even more. We're gonna pop that out of its trap and we're just gonna turn that until one, the blood stops, or two, we can't turn it anymore. But usually it only takes a couple spins to stop the bleeding in an artery. So I'm just gonna spin it a couple times just to show you. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that back inside of the windlass trap. All right, so once we spin it a couple times, we're just gonna pop that back inside that windlass trap. And that keeps it from unwinding. And if we don't do that and we let go, what's gonna happen is it's just going to unwind and it's gonna lose uh, pressure. So we want to spin that a couple times, get it nice and tight. We're gonna pop that in the trap. Now the windlass is stuck and it's not gonna go anywhere. So now we need to take that white tab that we had before and we're just going to pop that over the windlass. Now we have the strap hanging off, right? This isn't necessarily a bad thing. We can leave that there if there's enough Velcro traction. If we're not sure about this having enough traction, before we close this off, we can just take the strap, wrap it around and tuck it inside with the windlass where it's not hanging off and then we close it off. And that's very simply how you put a tourniquet on. And now you see on this white piece right here, it says time. That's because you need to mark down or remember what time you put this tourniquet on this person. Now in the military, we didn't have time to do this if we were in a combat situation and somebody gets shot. A lot of times they teach us, instead of trying to write this stuff down on here, we're just gonna take our finger, dip it in whatever blood is in the area, and we're just gonna write on the person's forehead, T for tourniquet, little dip, and we're gonna put the time that we applied the tourniquet because this allows the surgeons or the doctors to know, hey, there's a tourniquet on this person and this is when it was applied. Because after the two hour mark, you start to get different issues because you've cut off the circulation to this limb for so long. So at that point, a doctor or a surgeon needs to take care of the tourniquet because you taking it off after the two hour mark is just gonna cause more problems for that patient. Uh, than you had before. Now the other method I want to show you guys is one where you don't have to take it apart and put it under the limb. You can just slide it on the limb. There's one key point that you need to remember to make this just a little bit easier when you're trying to put it on somebody so you're not losing the limb or you're not losing the tourniquet is when you pop this open it's already in a circle right? So go ahead and reach your dominant hand through the tourniquet as such and if this is somebody's arm I'm just going to go ahead and grab their wrist or their hand and I'm gonna take the hand that's free and I'm just gonna slide that tourniquet 
up to where I need it. If it's the arm, it'll be in their armpit because you want it high and tight, right? And again, the same process goes. So now we already have this tab, so all we have to do, pop that tab off, and we're just gonna tighten this down as much as we can, try to get as much Velcro traction as we can. And then we're gonna pop the, tent of the windlass out, go ahead and tighten it, put it back in the trap, and then we, again, we can wrap this around or we can just leave it and then close that tab off. And now we have a tourniquet that's on the arm. Very simple, very quick, and very easy to use. So those were the two methods that we can use to put a tourniquet on somebody else if they need it. So the next and possibly the more important aspect of using the tourniquet is for self-aid. Now, when we're putting a tourniquet on ourselves, it's a little bit different because we need to make sure that we're putting the tourniquet on properly to give us the best advantage to tighten that tourniquet down and tighten the windlass down where it's gonna make it easiest for us and we don't have to fumble with it and we can stop our blood loss as quickly as possible. There's two main things that we need to watch out for when we're putting a tourniquet on ourselves, and it's the way we're pulling the strap and it's where our windlass ends up before we start tightening it down. We can run into some issues if we do it improperly. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop our tourniquet open just like this. Now remember that little red tab that I showed you guys to fold down to be able to grab onto? So when we're putting this tourniquet on ourselves, we need to think red towards the heart or blood towards the heart. However, it's easiest for you to remember, just always remember red or blood towards your heart. All Cat7 tourniquets are gonna have this little red tab. What I mean by that is when I go to apply this tourniquet to myself, if I'm going on my right arm, or maybe left arm to you guys, uh, depending on the video, is I'm gonna slide it on high and tight, right? And I'm gonna take that red tab and I'm gonna pull it towards my heart. And that allows me to quickly take that Velcro off and tighten that tourniquet down as tight as it needs to be. The reason we wanna put it on that way and not where the tab is facing away from us is because if we set it back up and we go to put this on where the tab is now facing away from us, we run into reach issues because now we have to reach under us and grab that tab. And now we have to turn it around, try to get it right and tighten it down. But what happens is we end up in this situation. And now our windlass is on our back right here. And now it's harder for us to reach and tighten it. So we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and reset this up and we're gonna throw it on properly. So I'm gonna throw it on high and tight. And I'm just gonna pop that Velcro off and tighten that windlass down. Now something you can do if you're able is once I tighten this down, I can go ahead and keep it in my armpit and use my armpit as a point of reference to keep that Velcro intact with it so it doesn't come apart. Now the other thing we need to keep in mind is where our windlass ends up when we're tightening this down. Now you notice I talked about the windlass being out here and hard to reach, right? Well, if I tighten this down so much and I'm reaching all the way across and I pull this windlass into my armpit, how hard is it gonna be for me to turn that windlass and happen to deal with my, my chest or my arm each time I try to turn the windlass? So I wanna make sure that the windlass ends up right here on the outside of my shoulder so it's easy for me just to reach and tighten that down. Once we have it secure with the Velcro and our windlass is in the proper spot, we're just gonna tighten it down and go through a process of working the tourniquet like we're supposed to. By tightening it, put it in the trap, we can take that Velcro if we're able to and throw it through the uh, windlass trap or we can just keep it down here in our armpit because it's not going anywhere. And then we just take that tab and put it over. Remember what time you put it on. Uh, if you're able to write it down, go ahead. Or if you have uh, some bystander that can remember it and relay it to 911, then that's more beneficial to you. Now, if something happens to us where we get shot in the leg or something like that, or if we severed our femoral artery, and we have to throw it on a leg and maybe we just can't reach because of some injury. The same concept applies when we were putting it on somebody else. We can just take this apart as such and just slide it under our leg wherever we need it. Nice high and tight on the leg, right? Because we don't want to have to think about where we're putting it because our fine motor skills and critical thinking skills goes down. We're just going to get it nice and tight and attach that Velcro to itself. And from here, we just go through the same process. We tighten that windlass down as much as we need it to. We're gonna put it in that trap and then we're just gonna close it off as such. Again, very simple piece of gear to use, very valuable life-saving tool that you can keep in your, in your kit.
Guys, knowing how to set these tourniquets up properly and get them ready for quick and easy deployment and practicing with them and knowing how to use them effectively is the number one thing you can do outside of just regular training to possibly save your life or somebody else's life if it's needed. I tell everybody that I speak to, if you can get at least one piece of trauma kit in your uh, vehicle or in your home, that's not a regular boo-boo kit, get a tourniquet because this is gonna save your life more than most things will. I hope something in this video really helped you as far as stepping your game up and your medical knowledge or even motivated you to go out and get your own sets of tourniquets, put them in your vehicles, put them in your homes, put them where you're most actively at most of the time in your life so you have them readily available. In fact, comment down below if you guys already have tourniquets in your vehicle, what kind of tourniquets do you have and uh, do you know how to use them? That being said, go out and get some tourniquets, get off your butt, get to training with them, know how to use them, know how to effectively deploy them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay prepared, stay safe.